Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Skippy Low Looks at Hollywood. Today's guest is actor-producer David Knapp. Joining David are Broadway star Peter Van Norden and actress Nina Talbot. And now, here's the man of the half hour, Skippy Low. Yes. My God, Montecito. Is it Montecito? Montecito Company, right? But you are from Montecito. No, that's, I'm not. But, no, we have you're not, a, but you have a house. Parents have a house up your, there. Your parents have. Yeah, that's the name Is of that the production the name? company. Is your production company. Actor, producer, now producing a new show in town? Yes. Jail. Indeed. Starting October, uh, previews October 4th, uh -huh. and we open October 10th. Jail, jail birds. birds on Broadway. What's that jail birds on Broadway all about? Well, you Tell see me. the big marquee <laughs> on, the, on the Sunset Strip now, uh -huh. we're at the Tiffany Theater, right. which is probably the most comfortable and I think probably the most beautifully uh, designed off-Broadway theater in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, so we're very excited theater, about it. Los Angeles, getting a lot of it. Yes, we Tell are indeed. You, but you producing a lot of shows nowadays. I we've mean, done we've done nine shows since 1982. Really? So we have done a bit. But you know it's interesting because about 30 percent of the shows in New York now, Broadway and Off-Broadway, uh -huh. are uh, emanate from Los Angeles. Uh, uh -huh. and, the, and the rest come from London. I don't think New York's instigating too many productions they aren't this good. Structure. No, but about 30 percent of all the shows that are uh, major Off-Broadway shows in New York and Broadway shows mm -hmm. got their start in Los Angeles, were developed in Los Angeles. Tell us about Jail Birds on Broadway. Musical? Yes, it's a musical comedy. <laughs> it's, it's a cross between some of the 50 styles of shows, I guess. Like, I don't like to compare it to anything because it's a very unique concept, but it's... Uh, don't compare it. Just all right. What, well, what I would say really? it has some of the style and mechanisms of, of shows like uh, Guys and Dolls and Pajama uh -huh. Game. It also has some uh, kind of burlesque uh -huh. quality to uh -huh. it, baggy pants kind of comedy, a wonderful score. And uh, great choreography by it? Rob Barron, uh, uh, Bill Sk uh, Stein Kilner, mm -hmm. and Sherry Eichen, who are the two writers of Cheers, mm -hmm. which is, I think, number Good three writers. in the nation right now. And Jeff Rizzo wrote the music, uh -huh. and the show is directed by a, a, a brilliant young man named Glenn Casal, uh -huh. uh, who has started in Los Angeles uh, not too uh, long mm -hmm. ago, mm -hmm. and uh, has done a wonderful job with the show. How many people in the show? Well, we have 11 uh, principals and then five under so 11. You're 11, 11 people. people. That's a big show. Yes, it is. Yes, it's yes. a great theater, though. It's a Tiffany it's a Theater. It's a theater. lovely, lovely little theater. Mm -hmm. I went to see a show there just recent, and I think that's one of the finest little theaters in Los Angeles. I think it's probably the best. It is? Yeah, I think it's the well Because it's on the strip, the, or because what? Because of the, the accoutrement of the theater, uh -huh. uh, the fact it's air-conditioned, and the location, which uh -huh. is mid-sunset strip <laughs> right. on the south side, right. so it's easily accessible and has great parking. Which is, you know, I mean, it sounds trivial, but that's a very important factor in theater in Los Angeles. <laughs> David Knapp. A place to park your car, yes. Where is David Knapp originally from? David? Originally from. How did I'm, David Knapp... I'm a sixth generation I mean, California. society boy. You are a society boy. Let's face it. Blue blood coming oh, into no, that's, Hollywood. That's, come that's, on, David. You know, that's a very okay. negative image in this town. No. People don't like that. They don't like it. They don't like okay, that. Okay, no, Brooks they, Brothers. They prefer, they prefer you to, you know, to come up from, from the ghetto somewhere. But, it's it's but more popular. Why show business, David? I mean, you really... Because you know. I was brought up in show business. My, my, my family was uh, not directly in show business. We knew a great many people in show business. My godfather was Basil Rathbone. Oh. Uh, Basil my cousin was Leo Carrillo. Uh -huh. And Delmer Daves was sort of my mentor. He gave me my first job in films as an actor. My first job as an associate producer. So I, I was sort of brought up in kind of a, a God, I guess you'd say Hollywood thing, although it was Pacific Palisades and Brentwood, uh -huh. but still the Hollywood genre. First movie. What was your first film? A uh, film called Parish. Parish. Warner Brothers with Troy Donahue Troy and Claudette Donahue. Colbert. God, that was a great movie. Well, it made a lot of money. It was a good movie. <laughs> it was a good commercial film, yes, it was. Diane McBain was in it, uh -huh. Dean Jagger, Carl it. Malden. Uh -huh. Television. Lots of television you've done, David? Yes, 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 yes. You sound kind of bored right now when I'm no, acting. Come no, on, no, David. I don't do much yeah, acting anymore. You don't like to talk about yourself. No, I don't, I look, I, don't, well, I don't find myself all that fascinating. But no, I mean, I've done a lot of television <laughs> uh, but shows. But now you're a producer and... Yeah, uh, well, I still act it? occasionally. I did, a, I did a couple of episodic shows this year. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, I still keep my finger my, my And you have my, a house in uh, Montecito? The well, my parents have a house in Montecito. Is that why you named your company Montecito? Right. I see, yeah. I see. Your mother, she owns some land where the v, uh, Veterans Hospital is. Tell well, me about no, that. no, no. 
That was a family land grant uh, uh, many, many years ago. Uh, there was, uh, I'm going back to the King yeah. of Spain, seven, mid 1700s, uh, mid 18th century. And uh, she, my great great grandmother, Arcadia Bandina de Baker, gave that property to the United States government for a veterans hospital right. after the Civil War. Mm -hmm. on the condition that it only be used as a veteran's hospital. I see. Uh, there's about 300 acres there between uh, Westwood and Brentwood. Ah. And then uh, the U.S. government subsequently has, has uh -huh. infringed on that agreement. They yes. put in a yes. federal building, they put uh -huh. in a baseball field, uh -huh. and the Tom Bradley was even trying to put in a housing development there for uh, uh, a low-income housing thing. Uh -huh. And uh, that wasn't part of the agreement, so that's why we're in litigation. Here's a lady government. next to you sitting. Anita Talbot. God <laughs> almighty, you look lovely, darling. Thank you. Blue and pearls and yes, all. Yes, my little Nita, You know David Knapp. You met him in the we green just, room. We, we met in the uh, to, room. Nita uh, from yeah. Bronx. She is from Bronx, uh, back east. Bronx is it? Harlem originally. Harlem. Born. Harlem. Born Harlem, New York. I mean, but not, you, you know. came out to Hollywood years and years ago, Nita Talbot. Yes. As a blonde, under contract. Yes. What studio? Warner Brothers. Wait, yeah. Now what happened? They You're were kidding. I was, Lauren. I was, they Brothers. signed me to be a threat to Lauren Bacall. P.S. I didn't threaten her. You know? Is that it? I used to go around, you know, imitating her and wearing the clothes, and it was snowed that year. It was a disaster. And then they dropped uh -huh. me. It was terrible. Lauren Bacall. Yeah. She interfered in your career then, did she? Well, <laughs> yeah, in a way, uh, kind of, yeah. Tell me, yeah. first movie, what was it? The very, well, You've Less done so her. many. Yeah, well, Bundle of Joy really was the first, like, part. Eddie Fisher? Yeah, and Debbie Reynolds and Debbie with the baby. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Norman Torrey. Is it really your yeah. first? Yes. That was a kind of a cute movie. Oh, did I tell you that when I opened my mouth, Eddie Fisher fainted? Because <laughs> I don't sing too well. You know, as is ideal for a real well, editor. Well, so yes. I well but I have. Be, You're I'll, very nice, David. I mustn't say anything. <laughs> Truthful. Mothers, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. No, I, I, I adored them and I was so thrilled and excited. And Tommy Noonan, great cast. Yeah, just wonderful Nita people. Talbot. That name, Need to Tell, it's not your real name. No. I mean, you had like a name, a stripper's name. I mean, it sounded yeah, like I a did. stripper's name. Ginger Gray. Ginger Gray. Yeah. That's but like a dancer, a burlesque dancer. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I love it. Who gave you the name? Well, I took it because I was nicknamed Ginger. My real name is Anita Sokol. It's Russian. I don't uh -huh. know. You know so. Russian. Yes. And uh, then it was always Ginger Sokol. And then when I became a, a Conover model, they said, that it's a terrible name. You've got to change it. Harry Conover said. So I was going with a, a hockey player at the time, George Grady. Uh -huh. <laughs> Cute. And <laughs> And uh, I, I said, that sounds kind of gingerady, but that sounds even worse. Da, 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 You know, so, so I said, oh, gingerady. So I went out and he said, why don't you just take out the D? The Harry kind of said, and that's, uh, that's, I went to Parents Magazine, but I was so big for my age, mm -hmm. I was like 13, they kicked me out mm -hmm. and kicked me upstairs because I was like huge, 5'8", yes. uh, at like 16. So that's how I got to be a model and that's how I got the name. So and when I came to Hollywood, Molly? they said, Ginger Gray, sounds like a stripper. Yes, so we pulled around with names and I went, reverted back to the real one, Anita, took off the A and we kind of figured but you know what, what I would like? go good with I it. I like the, the story. Oh, can Check. I squeeze you? Mm. Oh, you're so <laughs> sweet. I, I love I you. Think I like that. sounds like a stripper. It does. Oh, no. Well, oh, you've I never been to our burlesque theater, theater then. Yes, Any I ginger, have. though. Da, 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 candy bar. That sounds exactly. Ginger is like a stripper. Jack Carson. On the Jack Carson show. Dearly love him. Wasn't he great? Oh. Gave you the name. He gave me? Gave me the name. Nita? Yes, no. he said, Nita, I had a friend, Vera Newton, who's Vera Budnick, he said, Anita Slotnik, Vera Botnik, he said, my God, change your names, and that's how it happened, how, he said, how terrible. How has it worked with Jack Carson? What a genius, oh. what a wonderful human being, and oh, funny, and I love did you learn a lot? Oh, yeah, did I? Yeah. Was it tough for a young girl from the Bronx coming to Hollywood, and then... <sighs> Going back to New York. I Very mean, tough, he, but I got my break from casting Jack. Casting couch there? No, no, I got no? Jack. Gave me, I never went. Oh, never? Never went. Jack was just dear friends. Okay. He was madly in love with Lola at the time. He's going through a divorce with Albright. But he was, I just adored him. He was a genius, I think. Did you ever see him in that picture with Rosalind Russell? It was so brilliant. Oh, the, yes, yes, yes. What was that? Oh, I that? can't think. It was like, oh, he was he was, he was a wonderful oh, so actor. Many yes, I so can't many. Say it was he was a I marvelous think. actor. Anyway, he gave me my first break on, uh, on his so show with is? Sweeney and March. Bob Sweeney's now directing, of course, Hell's Dead. Uh -huh. But uh, as a little walk on where they follow me with a camera right. in a black dress, I slink, no uh -huh. dialogue, believe mm -hmm. it or not. Mm -hmm. And I stole the show, I was brilliant. And then at the end, they follow me, they pointed to the derriere, and I'm dressed up like an Eskimo. So it's like they followed me to the North Pole, and uh -huh. I got like a stand. It was, I loved it. Charles Lawton. My beginning. Tell oh. me about Charles Lawton. Fascinating. I learned so much. 
Yes. Study Checking from the earthquake. Checking if everything's here. Wait, no. I guess. Charles so, Lawton. Uh, is a footnote for today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what a morning. We started off with a bang. Let's see hey, how yeah, we, we go out. We had an earthquake here today, ladies and gentlemen. Six one on the Richter. Six point one, oh, one folks. <laughs> it began the Oktoberfest. We're okay. Um, anyway, Charles was the most fascinating man I think one of I've ever met in my life. I happen to adore Peter Lawford, Arthur Treacher, Charles. All these Englishmen who came into you my life. You worked with all I, of these. What? All of them. Actors. I studied Shakespeare with Watton. An onomatopoetic. Oh yeah, I was many things. Beautiful uh, Need experience. Need to Shakespeare. Why? Yes. But why? You wanted to be. I, I, that's I, the way to do it. To be well, a good actor. Well, he accepted me, but he see, he scared me. I hate to say this, Charles. I mean, well, he's not going to hear me now. But Elsa too. I think is not with us. But anyway, uh, yeah, they interviewed me for the book when she was writing it. But he was—he just terrified me. So I didn't really do my best work because he scared me by the fact that he accepted me. And I was very insecure in those days. You know, I still am. <laughs> well, nothing's changed. But the point is. Uh, Whenever he left to go on his Don Juan and Hell or his tour, I would do all this brilliant work. Mm -hmm. When he was away, he scared me. But then I wouldn't let him defeat me. It was mm -hmm. a very interesting relationship. I can't quite go into the entire yeah. thing. But it, it. It, he, and then he coached me on the side alone. He said, you're on the horizon when he saw me in Best of Broadway. And I met him in the store club, and I knew I'd done it. See, because I was afraid, and I yes. wasn't progressing as uh, the way he just frightened me, which I don't know why, you know. But but I won it. I won in the end, you know. He said, "You're on," and I, I took all the reviews and stage door. You stayed the around banana. Hollywood, though. You stayed around Hollywood. You battled it here. I battled for a while, here. but I went back, Skip, and you I did? began all over again. Yeah, because I was only a kid. I had no experience, really. I should have stayed and studied, you know. No, I'm talking about when you went back. Then oh, you when came I went back. back Oh yeah, I went back to start all over again right, after being right, dropped right. for more. David, days. you know it's tough for a young girl to come from the Bronx and then she's oh god, and they put you on the I putting was, in rain I was alone. Raised in you New know. York City, I wasn't a problem. You, what do you mean it wasn't theater? a problem? You just get raped and mugged. You walk down any <laughs> no, street. I never got raped Were you doing the theater in New York acting? Yes, I've done shows in New York. You certainly, have. as an actor and a producer. We have. a a gentleman from New York. The Playhouse in New York. I see. Really? We have a gentleman from New York who is in we your sure play do. and wonderful Broadway actor, Peter Van Norden. How are you? Good, Skip. You're How are in you? the show of Jailbirds Broadway on Broadway? I am. I'm in it. Yes. Tell me about Broadway. How did you Broadway. first Broadway show? First Broadway show, Romeo and Juliet. Oh. Kidding. Circle in the Square. Uh huh. Pamela Payton Wright, Paul Rudd. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. to be in there. Um yeah, my first Broadway show. I played a tiny little role of a friar. Uh huh. Uh, a friar. Yeah. Interesting. But where's Peter Van Norden from? Where are you originally from? The Bronx. Are you really? I'm really? from the Bronx. <laughs> 657 Katona Park North. The Cater Avenue in the Bronx. Ah. Well, I went to PS4. PS44. Are we talking? <laughs> went to the St. same Lucy's. school? St. Lucy's. It's a nice Catholic, Catholic school. nice Catholic school. school. We're all Catholics here. Tell me, <laughs> tell me something. I would like to know very <laughs> Jill Burns on Broadway. Having fun doing it? Oh. In rehearsals now? Oh. It's an absolute joy. I mean, first of all, the, the part I play is what is the part? The most outrageous what thing in the, the world. Part? First of all, the, it's two roles. Mm -hmm. um, the first part is a character named Maud, Maud. who is a woman prisoner. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Takes place in a uh, in the Secaucus Correctional Institute yes. for Women uh, in New Jersey, in New Jersey. Yes. Um, and it, it's th that sort of half parody, half spoof on all those yeah. 1950s B prison movies with women. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, and Maud is, of course, the uh, idol like of Cage. Idol of Pino. Cage. Ah, oh, perfect. I was in it. Concrete yes. Jungle. Cage. 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 Alex Parker. Exactly. Warner, Warner Brothers. Warner oh. Brothers. James <laughs> Sterling. Hope Emerson. Name them. Don't mind them. if we take no, the show away from Barbie. What a cast. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Agnes <laughs> Moorhead. Who's doing it? She signs that card. She says she'll be back. Agnes Moorhead. Remember how it ended? Agnes Moorhead. Would you tell me who's doing the part? The lady. So we didn't ever let him fit in for Peter. The first character is uh, Fern Fitzgerald and yeah. Constance Harkar, who was a young lady who came out here from New York uh -huh. on spec this summer, I and see. her agent uh, said, "Come out a couple of days early because they're auditioning for I this see. show, and there's just a Chinaman's chance in hell that it I might see. work out." She did, and she got the part. Same so dance. there's a kind of a sort of a Cinderella story there, uh -huh. right? And Patty Colombo is in it, mm -hmm. and. Uh, 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 Elmery uh, Wendell, Nancy Shear, there's a wonderful cast. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Ralph Bruno, Richard well, Doran, Peter, Peter uh, Roger Castellano. Oh, but he I'm never sorry. finished his role. I, so which, then well, you anyway, the, the, the first character is this character named and, Maud, who is right. this absolute killer of, a, of a, uh, uh -huh. an inmate. Mm. And who's uh, the second the one? The second character is, uh, the second act takes place on Broadway. Uh 
ah. as the title might suggest. Um, the second character is a character named Caesar King, who is probably the most disgusting, revolting Broadway producer to, uh, to hit the boards in many years, I think. Uh -huh. uh, I love it. That's but he's... Lot, he? I'd, I'd rather see a snake than a Hollywood producer. <laughs> Based on oh, quite a few slide. people I've met. <laughs> Peter Van Norden, sure you have does. done a lot of television here in town, I understand. Uh -huh. Sure. Seen elsewhere? Seen done? elsewhere, Hill Street, Hill Street. You've Cheers. Done it you keep busy here? Yes. Thank New God. York? Rather stay in New York or here? Right now, I, I like being out here. It's been very good for me. It's been very it good is? for my family. Uh -huh. um, there's just much more work out here right now. It is. How about you? Need to know. I you would you stayed here or New York or you go by coast? No, never since I was uh, uh, <laughs> mugged in front of St. Patrick's Cathedral. Oh, come on. Let's not put New York. <laughs> you can get mugged here it's now. Okay, so Don't put I New York down. I would if they took the bag. No, I, I can't handle it. Anymore. It's not Why? the same city. You walk across there and you get killed. You're kidding. I mean, it's like a city. It's so ugly. My daughter came back with conjunctivitis and laryngitis. Says, Mommy, nothing will ever kill you. She said, you're a survivor. Fort Apache in the Bronx. She said, how did you do it, Mommy? Because it's true. Killed a million people with uh -huh. these bags on Fifth Avenue. I had to learn <laughs> Did how to you survive. really? It is a terrible place. I never want to go back. I'd love to go to Europe. And I'm not overly mad about Hollywood, but I would love to really do something in New York. Not Europe madly film. over. New York was once the great city of the world. I'm sorry. I mean, it's terrifying what goes on there, you know, to go back. They What's lock doors. That's I mean, new and exciting. Oh. Need a Talbot's life. Well, right I'm now. going to see the bring me the head of Dobie Gillis at Fox. I hope uh -huh. I it's a Today? thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I just did a wonderful pilot with Bill uh -huh. Daly and Connie Stevens uh -huh. called Connie Father Stevens and. Stevens was in Paris. Yes, she, yes, she, <laughs> she was. was. She she's was. wonderful. Victoria. I think she's starring in this oh, oh, Dobie. Uh -huh. Isn't yeah. it fun? Give her my love. I will. <laughs> I hope it sells. Years. She looks gorgeous. Uh -huh. She's wonderful. Very talented. Lady. Oh, fantastic. We have the same birthday. We got along like this. Anyway, I'm mad about her. I just pray it's about a vet and an ex-wife Helen, played by Connie, and I'm the vet's assistant and very funny two darling children Heidi and Jason and then uh, Carmine Caridi's in it and Bunny uh, Summers wonderful cast one yeah. and Melissa Steinberg just a, so I'm just praying it's Taft Entertainment I mean need to tell it's good. looking you know through all your accomplishments oh. in Hollywood New York every, through all your accomplishments are you satisfied right now come on tell me are you no Never. No? Why? I'll never be. Because I'm, I mean, I haven't really ever had the opportunity to show how really funny I can ah, be and how really that's right. tragic I can be. That's what I'm and that's for. the thing I want. It's not like I say polish up the Oscar, but it's like I've never in a long, long, long many years had a right. juicy, terrific role. You know, it's like here or there. Hollywood you know, doesn't, it's not fair to certain it's, actors, no, is there, Peter or no, David? Uh, I mean, but life isn't fair. But life isn't fair. Right. Never said but who ever said that? True. But that sometimes good actors are now. never noticed. Yeah. And some Great bad actors ones become and very become successful. successful. Why oh, is that, David? Well, I You're think, a producer. Well, I think, I think, why? I think in film, Skip, I don't know if you folks will agree with me or not, I think there, in, for start, a major start, there's a certain intangible quality that has very little to do with talent. If you are talented and have it too, that's a great asset. Right. But there is something very special that somebody used to call it, I think they're referring to Clara Bow as it. Mm -hmm. It's that something that, that magnetism, magnetism, that something the audience feels comfortable with you, they feel secure with you, they know you'll take yeah. care of the bad guy at the end of the picture. Mm -hmm. Whereas other actors who are three times as talented will tour around in summer stock and regional companies for 30, 40 years at Seattle Rep, Tyrone, Guthrie, Minneapolis, yes. mm -hmm. and uh, be highly regarded by their peers, mm -hmm. and nobody else gives a tinker's to. You need to tell me, uh, you're a very funny lady. You know, you happen to, you should have your own series. I know. Really, your own series, because you, you I paid know. your dues. I like, know, I hate that I word, know. you paid your dues. I, I mean, I, but I it's, a lot, you, yeah. you know. But you I like know. to do dramatic roles, too. I love to do, I did two uh, Desire Under the, Eugene O'Neill plays of all things, right. Iceman Cometh and Desire Under the Elms. I mean, it was, oh, what an experience with yeah. Ed Asner and uh, Marty Balsam. See, when I say faces, UCLA. I think Anita Talbot has faces. You know, yeah. when, they, when they say faces. Yeah, but all they remember, but, Skip, is but, Hogan Darling. I'm yes, Hogan yes. They think I've done it 40 right. years, that's all they think, Hogan <laughs> Darling. I said, please, no, 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 I love that show. Was it tough for you, Peter <laughs> Van Norden, coming to Hollywood? And Was it tough at the beginning of your career coming back from New York here? Or are you brought into New York? Or? I, I, uh, I was fortunate in the way I came out here, very fortunate. Um, I, I did a show in New York, uh, a big musical, right. uh, called Little Johnny Jones. It played the Dorothy Chandler right here. Certainly did. Little Johnny Jones uh, is uh, played, the musical. Right. The George Wonder. M. Cohan musical. George, George M. Cohan. Cohan. David Cassidy did it out here. And that's who did Donny it. Donny right. Osmond did it back in New York. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It played all of 
one performance in New York, both acts. What part did you do in that? I, um, I played the villain in that. I played the villain who you love to hate, uh -huh. Anthony Anstey. Yes. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> a lot, we had a wonderful time. Show. It was a show, we did it for two years. We yes. toured the entire country with uh -huh. it. Um, but anyway, that show played here. It played mm -hmm. here at the Dorothy Chandler for whatever, a couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, and there was enough notice uh, for me at the time, yes. casting people, producers, that kind of thing. They all said, yeah, I'd never been here before. Um, and they all said, you know, you'll think of coming out here. Uh -huh. there's, there's some work for you out here. Uh -huh. yeah, it's an interesting well, so type. Peter is a great type. Yeah. He's uh -huh. a superb type. actor yes, and yes. a wonderful comedian. And that's, you know, because that's they the can say there's a lot. There are a lot of actors that can, that are very, f you give them a scene where they can chew up the scenery and they're fine. Yes. But how many people can be subtly funny? I mean, you know, and he is, he's, he's, uh, he's absolutely super. I love the man. David Knapp. I'd love to come as a producer. Can we? We yes. are going well, to. Yes. Can you? Can you, <laughs> can you what come? Kind of is that, no, we don't want what's anyone the, to see it. Top, We're doing a special the club. That We're going to run it for one night. Oh. Nobody <laughs> allowed in. David Knapp, is it <laughs> difficult when sometimes, like you audition for this, when you see people? Yeah. You see a lot of people? Oh yes, we saw. You see what you're I would say we saw close to 150 actors for these for these. Do you know actually roles. what you're really looking for, or do they bring it to you sometimes? Oh no! Sometimes no, but you're, you're absolutely right. No, sometimes somebody walks in and and they bang, bring it to there. you. It was that way with Peter. He brought his. Uh, and, and actually, uh, somebody else had been set in the part. Yes. And had to got a got a major film for seven weeks uh -huh. and canceled. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. we were down to the wire, and uh, we saw uh, about eight more actors. And Peter walked into the to the rehearsal hall, uh -huh. and everybody sort of looked at each other. Yeah, if that we can just it. sing an act, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, which he and did. He did. Both, but he's also a very fine singer. Uh -huh. uh, to, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a Renaissance man. Oh. <laughs> you study singing? Did you Renaissance know? man from the Bronx. Did yeah. you study in yeah, the Bronx? Well, you are. Did Why you not? Um, I studied with Sandy Meisner in New York. Why? Acting. How did Peter get into the theater? What made you decide yeah, that, to theater question. as a child? Um, or yes, as a too. child. Um, my family could not have been further away from the, <laughs> the show business. Uh -huh. My father is a private investigator and a lawyer. Really? My mother is a housewife. We lived on Long Island after we moved right, out of the Bronx. Uh -huh. Lindbrook. Yes. Um, uh, but my, there was a, my parents were real interested in Broadway musicals. Uh -huh. And there was always the music in the house, See. the Broadway musical scores always. And they had a major effect on they me as a child. They got you subliminally. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No question about people it. Around, they wanted this for you. No people question people around that area is strictly they're geared for the theater. They really are. Oh, absolutely. More I was so myself. than the West Coast people. Absolutely. It's coming yeah. here, though. The theater's coming. We just interviewed well, Dorothy seven. Lyman, who's, who is wonderful. She has sure. a, a new theater for directors. It's ADT or something like that? I have like the card that. in it my doesn't purse. Matter. ADT. It's ADT. Lexington. It's in yes. Lexington, and it's for directors. And she is opening, and it's a wonderful little theater. And uh, Quality of Mercy. Quality of Mercy is appearing right now, and it's... It's, it's good theater. Theaters are coming to L.A., uh, lots of it, and I'm very happy for that. What do you see about it, David? Do you see it? I think it, I think it has to. First of all, so many people from New York are now here. out here. <laughs> They're here. So they exactly. can work. So I They're think here. by, um, <coughs> by sort here. of, you know, converse ways that we have to, there's going to be ultimately much more theater out here. And I'd love to see some medium-sized houses like take over. You know, What's three, David Knapp's? We, we, yeah. Not much, but we do. All our we actors do? get it. Yes, we That's even, very even nice. though technically this a is a waiver show. But as somebody said, the only thing waiver about this show <laughs> is, is, is the theater. Yeah. But the, the rest of it so is no. So you do That's very nice. Much, gas but money but they all, they all, they all have first refusal when it moves, and they also once we get Good. to a certain point with the with the books, uh, they uh, they get they get a piece did of you the swing action. That with equity, that's small uh, oh, yes. contract. No, 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 I did that myself. That's a Beaujolais. Oh, so that's something nice. something that's our company, the Montecito Company, always does with all that's actors. We always nice. pay. That's very nice. We don't pay them much, but then hopefully if the show is a success. Everybody's going to because they, they are all the uh, all the actors have That's a piece great. of the action. It's like David. Olivetti. You, you it's know, a rather, it's although I, I, although I, I'm right. anything but, it's a rather socialist concept <laughs> in the theater. But no, it's but it's like Olivetti. He shares the profits. In the it's very yes. That's it's very good. nice. What's David Knapp going to do? I mean, producer. Well, director, we've got a project. We've got a project. I mean, what do you really want? No, I love. I, like, I, do I, want? I enjoy doing. I mean, you don't need this. You know. Yes, I do. Yes, for yourself. I need it. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, what you know, you, what? a multitude of reasons. No, I, I'm also going to, uh, we have a television show now, which hopefully mm -hmm. we'll be going to pilot in the next 12 months, mm -hmm. called Cop Swap, which will be shot in Los Angeles and Sydney. Great. And which we've developed uh, mm -hmm. with Tom Wiley and Mary Rocco. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of interest in it, so we're very enthusiastic about that. Then I have a project called Leo's Gym, mm -hmm. which is a half-hour sitcom, which is we're going to be hitting the, the networks with uh, in uh -huh. a few months. So. So you we have, we're doing TV. You too. like to keep busy. It's good, isn't it, Nita? 
great. You keep busy. I don't know what You way. keep <laughs> that is the only way. You really <laughs> keep busy, you don't you? Yeah, pretty busy. Yeah, it's been slow, but then, <laughs> yeah, I do. I love How it. about your own TV? I mean, I you've know. got to have your own show and need to tell I hope it. they're not towing our cars I mean, right yeah. now. Forget about the cars, darling. <laughs> right. Don't give it to Bert Lang. <laughs> right. Do me a favor. I, I need to tell them. We've got to see you on time. David, she's a perfect, yes. perfect she's a time. time. She's an excellent time. There, and I could, there was a role in this show. She there is. She, she would have, she would have done. But exactly. I, I don't sing. Yeah. Yeah. See, I have to yeah. sing. You yeah. don't sing, yeah. need to tell My mother never encouraged me. That's the one thing I always... With that low voice of yours? The one thing, David Craig said, that's the greatest sin for the parents. He was encouraged with music. They love, but my mother always said, You can't carry a tune. You're tone deaf just like your father. You know, I'm like, <laughs> do you dance, Nita? Oh, like you do dance. Like <laughs> <dream. laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Darling, you oh, can't see it. Oh, right. <laughs> right. We're shooting. Let's just show your legs, Nita. Right. They go all the oh, way up, I know. Dance like to die. I danced in with Elvis yeah. Presley and Girl Heavy. I played a stripper. I danced in Bourbon Street Beat. I danced uh -huh. in a million. I love to dance, but that's what kills me. And I have sung skip, but it terrifies me. You see, they carry me away after it. I mean, I can get through it, but I'm not. And it's like, oh, that's why I always it's encourage children and, and I mean, don't down. ever put, plant a negative. Holly, has it changed a lot for you, Miss Tina? Oh, Nina God, yes. Uh, oh, yes. Talbot's it's been around here for I don't, years. I don't, first of all, prove of all these equity words with theater. I think actors should be paid. Paid. They're so pathetic yeah, I did. that they can't even pay their rent. They're dying desperate just to be seen. It's like my daughter's struggling. But where are they going to showcase? Think. I know, I know. they got to so. showcase somewhere. Am I right, Dave? Yeah, but I mean, they may, you're making uh, money on this, aren't you? But they're making money. Not money really. on this. It hasn't opened yet. I've, I've got, uh, I've got uh, you know, we've you got the companies. You feel the producers are making money on the... I have never made money on the, next on the ninth day. show, uh, including I did, I've done two, I've done two uh, uh, off-Broadway shows in New York. I have never made a dime. It's a showcase for actors. And it's cost the company a great deal it's of money. It's a showcase. Yeah. Where are the people going to perform? They benefit from it as much as much more ultimately than I do because yes. I've had many actors get motion pictures, television series right. Right. out of out of the shows that I have produced. So right. I don't apologize to anybody. No, we take as good, we take as good <laughs> care of them as we possibly can. I think Peter yes. will attest to that. We Absolutely. do try to make life as pleasant and as comfortable for them as possible, and we do pay them. It ain't much as.